Sagittarius is a fire sign and it's mutable, ruled by Jupiter. This tells us a lot about it. We don't really need to understand very much more than that to work out the appropriate keywords for ourselves without needing to remember them. So fire, energy, purpose, fire, mutable, Ch changing direction all of the time as compared to the sun, which is constant fire in the sky, the sun, Leo, or Aries, the spark of fire that begins things. Sagittarius wants to move fire about. Its enthusiasm is infectious. Jupiter is a lot to do with enthusiasm and hopefulness, and that's the first expression of Sagittarius, hopefulness. Jupiter's faith is that it can expand, it can grow around any obstacle and assimilate new things into its being without upsetting what it is and who it is. It's the concept of the emperor, not the king, the emperor. I have kings working for me, kind of Jupiter feeling. So that's Sagittarius, fire, mutable, Jupiter. And we begin this uh, first expression in the first degree of Sagittarius, the grand army of the Republic around a campfire. These old guys have fought wars together. They've suffered and they've struggled and they're now having a chat about things, just talking together around the campfire. And what they're trying to do is to find meaning in the struggle. And this is pretty essential for Sagittarius. And we bring with this uh, first expression of hopefulness, the sense of there must be a meaning here. I just have to work it out. And uh, the second degree of Sagittarius is like the, the ocean with the white caps. The ocean always represents the unconscious nature. There's so much of it and it's always changing and nobody can really understand it. So whatever meaning you're looking for in Sagittarius 1, Sagittarius 2 is going to say, however, uh, we can't understand everything. It's, it's a balance between what we can understand. And understanding is a form of control. And Sagittarius wants to know everything and actually doesn't stop learning because everything cannot be learned. You can't finish learning. And so this mutable quality is quite well suited to Sag. And the oceans just indicate there's always more, always more of the unconscious to bring into consciousness. So it's a positive image for Sagittarius to have this ocean of unknowing because it's love is, is not to know the answer but to find a depth of the answer, a greater expression of the answer, more questions, more interested in questions than, than answers. And that word questions and quest, that speaks to Sagittarius. They like to be on a quest. In the third degree of Sagittarius, we have two men playing chess, and they're trying to work out a strategy for life here. So this is the third principle of hopefulness. Work out your strategy. You've got some meaning derived from past experiences in number one. Number two, you're aware that you can never know everything. It's always trial and error. So in number three, you've got strategic planning. Now Sagittarius, it does look ahead. It's a forward thinking sign. Now Sagittarius four, we have the, the little child learning to walk. And... Um, the image really is of a, a parent holding its hand and encouraging it and just giving it another chance and another chance to make a mistake, fall down, up you come, on. And this whole sense of guidance and support and, and so on. However strategic we may be, we're always going to get it a little bit wrong. And we can always reduce the number of errors that we make by accepting guidance. And then in Sagittarius 5, an old owl up a tree, ever the symbol of wisdom. And particularly, we can get a sense of where that wisdom comes from in that the owl can see in the dark. It sees what other beings cannot see. And 
wisdom is all about that. It's, it's not telling people trite cliches about what to do to get it right. That's not wisdom. That's a form of dogma, form of training and conditioning and so on. Wisdom is, is where you can just move into a new level of perception and you can see what other people cannot see. So we have the, the sense of developing that wisdom coming out of the hope for it. Very profound secret in that. A lot of people begin sentences that um, have to do with the learning that they want to engage with, with the phrase, I don't know. And I, I try to stop them from doing that because we do know. <laughs> we do know. It's just that the part of us that knows is currently inaccessible. And the reason that we do not know anything is because we don't ask the question correctly. Every question that's asked properly will bring an answer. And it's not really the answer that we're looking for. What we're looking for when we're asking a question is the disappearance of the question. Two quite different things, those. Question, answer is a polarity. Question, no question is real progression, is real wisdom. I remember when I was uh, consulting my Sufi guide, we used to get a precious little amount of time each year, a few minutes in interview because he was so busy and popular. And I noticed that any question that I rehearsed before I went into the room, it just dissolved in his presence. He didn't have to answer it. I just had to sit there with a question in my mind and, and it would just become so obvious. And I think that's what Sagittarius wants to do and they're, they're hopeful that they can do that. And that hopefulness is not coincidental. Hoping to find an answer just by framing a question is a profound wisdom worthy of the owl. The second expression is training. And we begin with Sagittarius 6 with a game of cricket. We have to learn to become a team player if we're to engage with training. And sport is an image of putting aside the self to serve the group. In this way, paradoxically, we develop the self. So unless we can surrender to the group consciousness in a game of cricket or in a lecture theater or a school classroom or in the neighborhood, in, in, in the, the teaching of life itself, unless we actually become a part of the whole thing, we can't really understand what training is all about. So the sixth degree of Sagittarius is about beginning the process of buckling down, learning something, doing work to learn something. And whereas that's rather impersonal in a sense, when we come to the seventh degree of Sag, Cupid knocking on the door, the very reverse is the case. It's very personal indeed. And we all um, enjoy the experience of Cupid falling in love and so on and it feels great it feels like luck has come to us and, and it's you, you can see that quite differently if you want to cupid is quite a demanding taskmaster we have no freedom of action when we're under the rulership of cupid and understanding that that we're enslaved by our emotions is an aspect of training because when we're training we're putting the emotions aside for a while we're, we're not seduced by our feelings we're able to gain a mastery uh, upon them now if you can actually take that to the level where you're a master of cupid you're an extraordinary person very exceptional indeed almost not possible. But some people do that, and the masters really do that. And it's understood that you can enjoy your emotionality, your, your attractiveness in love and so on. You can enjoy it, but you're not slave to it. It's a very high level of training, of self-training. 
Sagittarius 8 is rocks, things forming within them. A rock is a, a symbol of, of, of some lifelessness, we think. Yet within that mineral-rich environment, some basic forms of life can form algae that becomes the food for higher order vegetation and so on. So rocks support life. And this mystery is the mystery of alchemy. And if we think of ourselves as rather solid and, and physical and, and not really spiritually aware and awake, the training that we go through, including assimilation of our emotional nature, leads us to this greater sense of vitality. We awaken a part of ourselves that we just didn't know exists. And that's the highly developed spiritual side that we're discussing here. That in each of us there's such a high level of consciousness in potential terms that we would be dumbfounded, dumbstruck even, to know what we can be if we reach up towards our potential through the training. When we come to um, the ninth degree of Sagittarius, this is the, the mother leading her child up the stairs. We had this image in the first expression of, Sag, of a child learning to, to walk, and now we've got the child learning to climb the stairs. Again, a symbol of training. In this case, um, socialization. Um, the, the mother teaches the child not only to be who the child wants to be, but also how to fit within the environmental constraints that certainly must exist. And those must not be seen as constraints of limitation and strangulation and so on. They must be seen as supportive of our unfolding awareness of self. We can't become aware of who we are unless it is in contrast to something, someone, society, a community, until we push up against social life, we, we can't measure the identity, the unique identity of self. It, it's not possible. Nothing to measure it with. So we have to train ourselves to fit in with society in order to know that we're not quite like the rest, that we have a unique sense of being. And in Sagittarius 10, the golden-haired goddess of opportunity, this, this sense of I am unique and therefore I have unique possibilities, unique opportunities. Um, life is simply a field of potential for me. And I can just reach out and grasp what I desire. That's a profound wisdom that Sagittarius has. And it, it, it exemplifies the concept of faith and trust and appetite and, and just knowing that life is abundant and good and, and is there for us. The only reason that we haven't expanded into our greater potential is because we have not had that faith. And in Sagittarius 10 is saying, well, have it, have that faith. Jupiter, you see, Jupiter is very much to do with self-confidence and faith. The third expression is evolution. When we begin with Sagittarius 11, the lamp of physical enlightenment at the left temple, strange image. It refers to body knowledge, that the knowledge of physicality, the facts of the matter written in form, whatever feelings we've got, whatever philosophy we like, yes, but what are the facts of the matter? Does it work? What happens with the physical body when you practice that wisdom? And we have to remember sometimes that these highly advanced Buddhists, I imagine this refers to, they do have this highly developed spiritual sense of self. Of course they do. And of God, by their way of seeing it. And, and yet, they're also very down-to-earth, very practical people. This is a big deal within their teaching, that you have to get it together. And so many people don't really work on that level. You have to start with a foundation that works for you. 
and that has to do with making sure that the facts of the matter are attended to. And one of the very simple but profound spiritual practices, which is within Sufism, and it's something I do most days, is called Muhasaba, where you just record what's happening right now in your life on all manner of levels. What, what's your health? What's your financial situation? What work have you got? Are you under stress? Have you got um, on top of life? Are you on top of life today? Because if you're not, you need to get there before you start wandering off into meditation areas. Be on top of your life, and that's a real practice. That's a spiritual practice. Get that right first. Sagittarius 12 is, is the flag that turns into the eagle that crows. Flag, loyalty, eagle. Supervision, being able to see everything higher than loyalty, wisdom at the very high level, oversight. The crows, someone who crows is, is announcing something that they know that other people don't know. And here we have an image of pursuing the evolving wisdom that you can. You, 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 you give up your loyalties because you can see more than they can. You've been following someone and they've taken you to a point where you, you can now fly, but they can't. You've gone beyond them. And, and this is something within the, the process of a spiritual evolution where you, you follow a teacher until you've outgrown that teacher and then you move on and follow another until you've outgrown that teacher and then you move on. If you don't outgrow your teacher, well, why not? Why, why didn't you sort of learn what the teacher has to teach you and, and, and then move away. It's not so much that you're more than the teacher in that direction, it's just that that direction was for that person. And, and at some point you realize that there's your direction, which isn't theirs, it's yours. That's what it means to say that you've kind of outgrown your teacher. And then you speak it, you know, you, you've understood it differently and therefore you speak what you've understood partly to help people around you understand, but partly to help yourself understand. Because when you start crowing, then people will challenge you on it. And so, you know, you've got to be pretty confident that you know what you're talking about. And this is a real test, a real measure, an examination of, of how well you're doing. It's whether or not you can present yourself and the wisdom that now you adopt to others. So, the widow's past brought to light in Sagittarius 13. We tend to think of a widow as deserving of our compassion. We're not going to test her or examine her or bully her or criticize her because she's just lost her husband. But we are not forgiven our karma just because life has become hard we still have to deal with whatever we haven't yet dealt with. So this is the image of having to face up to the consequences of what we got wrong previously. We might well know all about the future and, and the knowledge of the present, we might know all of that, but actually we've still got to deal with our stuff. We've got to process everything that we haven't yet processed. Um, and this moves us into the next, Sagittarius 14, is the Pyramids and the Sphinx. These things were built in such a way that they lasted thousands of years. And this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to build a philosophy, an understanding, a wisdom, a sense of self that lasts, passes the test of time. Not really limited to the physical duration of this incarnation, we're trying to build upon eons of experience before this incarnation and, and become better so that the future is established at a higher level of consciousness. So we're not only appreciating the old knowledge that the pyramids and the sphinx represent, we're also creating knowledge now which will be looked back upon with the same degree as rev of reverence. So we're building on the old traditional knowledge in order to establish a greater depth and profundity of knowledge for the future. 
So we're taking life quite seriously. We're saying, look, I'm investing within this life in my eternal self. And you start to think of yourself not in terms of birth to death, but in terms of infinity, eternity, the soul level consciousness. That changes the game entirely. And when you up your game to play at that level, you have to be a bit cautious. This is first team. You know, this is where you're going to get com competition. You're going to get dangers coming at you. If you're trying to make a difference, then there will be the force of darkness trying to stop you do what you want to do in your lives. And this is the groundhog. So the evolutionary process ends up by saying, yeah, you might know more now, but be careful, be cautious, you know. And here, here we understand that such things as fear can be turned into spiritual principles if we bring light into them. So fear with light is caution. And we do have to understand that when we have become more, more powerful, more clear, more wise, more capable, that light will create a darker shadow. And, and we have to deal with that. The widow has to deal with her past. Well, we're going to have to deal with our past, so let's not create karma now, bad karma now. Let's do it properly now. And to do it properly, you need to be a bit cautious. You need to take care about doing it the right way. Discipline is the fourth expression of Sagittarius. And we understand when we're moving into an evolving sense of self that we've got to learn how to play the game again. We may well have mastered the game at one level, but if we've been moved up a notch in consciousness, there's a new game to play, new rules, new resources, new people, new subtle wisdom that we don't know about. And we have to be careful and disciplined as we go forward. We begin with Sag 16, which is the, the seagulls chasing a ship. Um, the fishing boat that they're chasing is um, going to give them food. It, it deals with fish, so they can, they can eat. But there's a bunch of them who all want to eat the fish that's there. And, and it's the quick ones, the ones who see that there's going to be a fish and, and, and move sharply at the right time timing exactly right to get the fish that they want. So it's all about grasping opportunities, knowing that the window is open for a very short period of time. So you're alert. This mutability of Sagittarius has got its attention all over the place, all over the place, looking at this, that and the other all of the time. And then it's fiery. So as soon as it sees something, it's moving on that knowledge before it has that knowledge and awareness. It, it, it it's sharpens its intuition to that level where it's acting on knowledge without bothering to decide because it knows how to move. And we have to get that sense of alertness. We, we need to see what's going on, a greater level of acuity. Notice the, the signs. You know, we're moving into a level of synchronicity here where things are happening that we want to happen. So we have to take them. We have to take our opportunities, and very often that means a quick decision and acting upon that decision. In Sagittarius 17, the Easter sunrise service, Easter is all about not dying, isn't it? Jesus ascended at Easter time, and th this is the same for us. Each new moment is an ascension where we're we're re-engaging with the life force. Every breath, every morning, every new event, every new person, every new opportunity. We're taking these opportunities with the seagulls and every new opportunity is a new beginning, which is celebrated at Easter. So this sense of like, wow, it's Easter, it's, it's new, it's sacred. Everything is sacred, every moment, this moment is new and sacred. This moment is new and sacred. And you live with that alertness of what is to be sanctified. And you give something an antidote to desecration by giving it a certain quality of attention. 
Attention, yeah, immediately, that's helpful, but a certain quality of attention, which is the Sagittarius quality of faith. Now, when we go to the 18th degree of Sagittarius, the, char the tiny children in the sun bonnets, they're, they're guarding against overload. They're, they're, they can't take the sun. They're babies, you know, they're children. They've got bonnets to, to protect them from the overload. And it is a wise person that understands that. Um, we do get burnout. We, we cannot cope with all that's going on. And if you're incautious about that, if you forget some of the, the lessons and you just you behave rashly, recklessly, there'll be a price to pay, you know. Don't do too much. Do as much as you can do, but not too much. That's the warning here. Sagittarius 19, the pelicans moving their habitat. This is where parents take action of a self-sacrificial type in order to guarantee their children and their children's to children and so on. So the sense that we're reaching here is a very high level of service, a very high level of maturity, a very high level of investment in the future. The pelicans that move their habitat, they, they, they don't really want to move. It, it costs them a lot, a lot of energy, puts their life at risk, but they must do that because otherwise their children wouldn't be able to survive. Well, there's a risk that they could not. And we have to be like that with ourselves. We, we're inclined as human beings towards comfort and security. Try a new situation, make it safe. And try another, make it safe. Try another, make it safe. That's what we're trying to do as a very highly evolved being. Expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. Well, of course, in the sense of Sagittarius, it tends towards expansion into recklessness. But then it has to contract if it burns out. And that contraction could become permanent if we're not careful. And in the case of the pelicans, they're expanding into a new environment for their kids. And the risk is that that's too much. Um, so what we do with the um, um, in Sagittarius 20, the men cutting through ice, is this image of good husbandry. Um, in times of abundance, we put something away. We save for the future. We don't spend all that we've got in the moment, which is a, a risk for Sagittarius. They, they do gamble. They are reckless sometimes. And this Jupiter level of extravagance isn't always balanced with the wisdom of Saturn, is it? So in this case, we're saying you need to, <laughs> you know, um, just be careful when you've created abundance. Be careful to employ it wisely. That's the image here. The fifth expression is expansion. Having developed the discipline to make sure that you can cope with what comes up, you're in a stronger position to move out and expand your horizons, develop areas of potential. And we begin by um, taking further guidance. Here's another image of guidance from Sagittarius. In, in 21, the child and the dog with the borrowed eyeglasses is, um, yeah, a dog didn't wear spectacles. Um, but what's happening here is there's this sense of, um, trying to take on something beyond your, your reach. Um, the dog is trying to become a person with the eyeglasses, is studying with, with, with spectacles and so on, so it's reaching up. And, and this is what we do when we go to a master and, and learn the wisdom of the master. We learn much more than words. We learn tone, we learn atmosphere, and we become like the master. And we develop into mastery simply by taking on the atmosphere and tone of the master. We don't really have to understand all of the wisdom, not yet, but we do have to take guidance at the higher level 
if we're to to really sort of move forward and, and expand our horizons fully. So then in, in 22, the Chinese laundry images. Um, see, these people are hidden away in the Chinese laundry. They're no doubt Chinese and they're in a, a Western country and, and nobody really knows that they're there and, and they're into this sort of seclusion and protected from corruption. When we expand consciousness, we move away from other people, friends, family, work, colleagues, and so on. They don't do what we're doing. We're moving away from them. And to be secluded in our own environment, maybe talking to other people that are on our level of consciousness, but no one else. That's the image, really. This is necessary this 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 protects what we have and deepens it through resonance so as we evolve and expand we, we look for other people to to hang out with who can talk our our language and understand our way of being i meet so many people so very many people who have not had a conversation at the highest level of consciousness with anyone else until they talk to me and then I introduce them to other people, and we're all talking together on this sort of level. And this ends their solitude. But it was necessary for a while to go into seclusion, to develop the certainty of, of your choice of where to be. Because when you choose to be on this path of self-development on a spiritual level, you choose to move away from society, actually. You have to find another group of people to, to choose to be your society. And that's not straightforward, that can be quite a challenge. So, Sagittarius 23, immigrants entering. This takes the principle even further, really. Um, if you move to another country, then you're the odd one out. And you are then in, in, in plain sight you know, you're not secluded in a Chinese laundry anymore. You're the old one out on public display. You, you really do have to sharpen your attention to do that and to soften your belligerence. You, you can't proclaim uniqueness yet. <laughs> um, you just don't, won't have the influence to do that. And you could be in harm's way if you tried. So an immigrant is like a walking target. They're, they're, they're first to be scapegoated, and then there's, where there's any emotional upset in the community. So for you to take on this position of, of moving into a field where you're the only one that's awake, that's, that's a challenge. It's a really major challenge that I think most of us have to undertake. 24, a bluebird standing at the door of a house. Peace and happiness. It's a lovely image, this one. And it promises the reward for the courage, sense of adventure, self-confidence, the faith that we're developing through knowledge that actually brings happiness. That's, that's why we're doing it. We want to be happy and we want to be peaceful. To be under stress, constantly competing, it's good for a while to develop the friction to move into new levels of understanding. But then at some point you, you have to realize that it's not okay to sustain that and that would give burnout. Peace is very rejuvenating. People who live in peace, they don't get old very quickly. They, they, they stay quite youthful. And happiness, well, what else would we be doing with our lives but the pursuit of happiness? seems self-evident to me. And we, we get there. We get to that level with it. It works. You know, the, the spiritual path works. And, and that means that we get to, to know more than other people and we get to apply that knowledge to our own satisfaction and then become peaceful and happy. And if you aren't yet peaceful and happy, well then you have a little bit more to do. Because that's the end result of all of this. That's why, why we're doing it. Sagittarius 25, a chubby boy on a hobby horse. The anticipation of potency. Chubby boy, 
false horse, but he's he's got this imagination. You know, he's he's not yet a warrior, but he's dreaming of himself as the field marshal that will defeat the enemy and rescue his country and be the hero and and so on. Uh, he's he's got this dream and. and He's using whatever he has available to help him dream it. And um, we need to do that. We need to have a vision of how it could be, how it could be better. And in this case, we're talking about I. I want to be bigger, more, more important, more satisfied, whatever. The peace and the happiness, lovely. I like that. I can return to that when I want that. And yet I've still got this vitality, I've still got this appetite to grow, which will take on battles and defeat dragons and so on. And yet that first starts, the very first moment of an adventure is an imagination. That you, you want something that you haven't got, you have a desire to be more. And this is to be sponsored if we're to expand to our fullest reach, then we have to start with imagining that. The sixth expression of Sagittarius is conscience. They are noble types, typically, the Sagittarius. They have a sense of dignity and honour and doing the right thing is an awakening, uh, an unfolding from the spiritual wisdom that they're developing and backed up by their nobility and their courage and their honour and, and so on. So in the 26th degree of Sagittarius, we have the image of the flag bearer. Um, this is the guy that stands out front waving a flag. He hasn't got a gun. Everyone's shooting towards him and probably at him. It's um, a dangerous position. And it upholds the loyalties of society. We start to serve society at that level of self-sacrifice because we want to proclaim, this is what I stand for, and I'm willing to die for it. Quite a strong statement. And this is what conscience is. It's a statement of what we believe in, what we stand for, and when we don't do something that's in keeping with that, when what we do is definitely not in accordance with our sense of principles and loyalties, then we feel a prick of conscience. 27th degree of Sagittarius is the sculptor. And in this case, we're trying to create something to represent our sense of beauty and principles and knowledge. We're trying to put all of that into our art and it's not transient. A sculpture lasts a long time. We're trying to build something that we're very proud of because of its beauty. And in Sagittarius 28 we, we take that one step further. We The old bridge across the stream. The old bridge is beautiful partly because it's in the context of the stream and it's built of the local building materials, the stone, and it's overgrown with ivy and the local vegetation, and it's, it's a part of it all. It's not only now a man-made useful tool for crossing the stream or the river. It's a part of it all. It, it's, it's become embraced by nature. It's in keeping with nature. Whereas the sculpture was separating self from nature. The old bridge is balancing beauty with usefulness, is balancing self with nature and others who are using it, is finding this social integration where we're, we're very happy with who we are and yet we become even happier when we're able to serve and fit in and be naturally beautiful within that context. Now 29 is the fat boy mowing the lawn. And we we bring this image of the, the bridge fitting in with nature into kind of a more advanced level where um, we're fitting in with society. Um, the fat boy is, is doing his job. He's, he's got a 
you got to mow the, the lawn because he's not a thin jockey or, or a clever architect or a beautiful model. He's a fat boy, and so he's having to do something about that. Well, he's mowing a lawn. That's what he can do. And he adds to the order and beauty of the neighborhood. He does as he's told obediently and has his place. And for him, it's okay. Um, we've all to find our place. And it may well be that it's work and we don't always select to do that. <clears throat> but all in all, it's okay. Yeah, I, I, I like this work. You know, he's, he's found a job which suits him. And we have to find a job that suits us. Whether that job is a normal thing where you go to a boss and he gives you wages or you just find a, a functionality within your neighborhood, within your social group. You just, you've got a, a gift to give. And we all have. It may not be paid, but we all have a, a role to play in society. We might be the people that go are the go-to people for advice. We might be counsellors or we might be experts at something or other. We might be able to fix somebody's computer nowadays, you know, but we all have a role. And that's a bit of a secret of success to find what that is, where we're happy to do what we need to do in society's terms. And the, the highest principle of that is Sagittarius 30, the Pope. And the Pope is, of course, a person. But when you're actually empoped, when you're actually given a social role, where you're in the public eye, you represent a principle, people put their expectations upon you, then you've lost a sense of being only a person. Now you're a person to yourself, but a symbol to others. And to take on that very difficult role of living as a symbol means that even though, and especially because you don't deny yourself, you can live as though you are something else. You can find yourself by losing yourself in a role. Each of us finds at the end of our lives that we have become something. We've become this unique version of some principle or series of principles that we have been living by. And they may well include spiritual principles. Certainly they'll include philosophy. And um, bit by bit by bit, every decision, every difficulty, every challenge that we've found moves us towards a sharper definition of who we choose to be, who we choose to symbolize, what archetypal balance of qualities we choose to symbolize. And this has been the whole journey of Sagittarius, is to find that. Here I am, alive on the earth, what am I supposed to be? A Pope, or whatever, something else. And I can do it. And people put that expectation onto me, and that's okay. I, I, I can do that without losing myself. That's the wisdom of Sagittarius to serve truth and yet to hold on to integrity of self. And you find that those two things have to be in alignment. Truth of self is self, and it has to fit into the community. We were born into this community in order to find a way to fit it. <laughs>